My name is Sofia Lewandowski and I studied Interaction Design at College for Creative Studies and FHUNU. At College for Creative Studies I was working on my master thesis Inclusion and Personalization for Autonomous Vehicles. The mission is to improve quality of life of people with physical mobility challenges through accessible and enjoyable autonomous vehicle experiences. The concept is meant to create a vision of how future autonomous transportation will support inclusion through personalization. The goals are actually to actually collect data uh, about uh, the Thomas vehicle, the self-driving vehicle environment, and deliver that information to people with mobility challenges, uh, to the general public at large, uh, and also have a, a communications uh, with the, the all stakeholders and make the information ready, readily available uh, to all interested parties, in particular uh, the, the disability community, veterans, and others. I'm George Durrani. I'm, I'm currently the Dearborn City Clerk. I, but before I was City Clerk, I was a uh, State Representative for the City of Dearborn for six years. He's the best State Representative and best City oh. Clerk we've ever had. Oh. <laughs> George Dadakowski, how are you? Good. So glad you became our new City Clerk. Oh, thank you. My name is Sofia Lewandowski and I study Interaction Design and User Experience. My background is transportation. Okay. Right now working on, uh, on the research uh, which is about inclusion and autonomous transportation. So, uh, do you have any thoughts on um, autonomous cars? How do you feel about it? Um, have you heard about it? Yeah, I think the time is coming for uh, autonomous cars, but I mean, I, we used to be a state legislator, and I, I know one of the committees that I was on, we talked about autonomous cars all the time, and we knew it was a, a coming trend, and it's kind of just getting people in that mindset that this is better for motorists, it's better for pedestrian traffic, it's safer. Mm -hmm. It's safer for everybody, people on bicycles with autonomous cars, uh, it's just the best way to go and the way that, of the future because a hundred years ago people didn't think we were going to get out of the horse and buggy and into Model T's, right? right. But we, we did and we managed and everything worked out fine and I think it's just a matter of time before that happens. Um, how do you feel about inclusion for autonomous vehicles, uh, like inclusion for veterans to um, get, um, give them more access to ve uh, autonomous vehicles? Yeah. Is there a big conversation about it? Is, is yeah, I, I think yeah. Any anybody that has a, a, a problem with their arms or their legs, mm -hmm. it, it, whether they're veterans or just people that that were in accidents altogether this is going to even the playing field for them because then they'll be able to uh, to get along and to get around as easily as anybody. It just pretty much puts everybody together in, in the same playing field. Yeah. Do you think uh, people are uh, informed enough about inclusion in autonomous vehicles? Is there an outreach mm. platform or something like that? Um, I, I, I don't really see it happening right now. I, I think right now they're worried about the general public buying into the autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. but I don't think they've really talked about inclusion yet as being a major part of it but I think it's part of the discussion that should be discussed mm -hmm. obviously but but I, I think we need to do more in that regard yeah definitely yeah if there's anything you think I can do to help you in, in, in getting the word out and being a, uh, a spokesperson for that type of thing I'd be happy to help you okay great it sounds awesome All thank right. you for your time could you please introduce yourself my name is Ronald Brown I'm a veteran Korean War veteran a mobility legs problem because I tore tendon years few years back. How do you travel places? Uh, metro lift. They call it metro lift. It's part of the DOT system. How do you get to a doctor's appointments? Well, you have to call in 24 hours ahead of time. Okay. Usually. Okay. Um, and is it organized by VA or uh, City of Detroit? Or, um, by the City of Detroit. City of Detroit. Yeah. Um, do you ever consider um, VA transportation? No, because it's only for medical and that's all. Okay. Have you ever uh, used public transportation like uh, buses uh, yes. or yes. Q-Line? Yeah. How was the experience? Uh, with well, they were a little bit harder to get on, a little bit not, not as accessible. Not as accessible? No, they're they're more. You can get to them easier because mm -hmm. they go all the time. Okay. There's always another bus coming, but see, Metro, if you had to schedule it, mm -hmm. and so that's the biggest problem. And you have to schedule it 24 hours in advance. So you said the um, experience with uh, VA transportation and also um, other transportation modes you use they are not enjoyable. What do you think should be uh, done? 
to improve this experience. They should be more flexible. More flexible, time flexible? A flexible time on time limits and places they can take you. Have you heard about self-driving vehicles? I heard about them. Mr. Brown, do you think there's enough information about um, autonomous vehicles and inclusion, uh, especially for people with uh, physical mobility challenges? If, if they have, I haven't heard it, no. How would you like to um, receive information about autonomous cars and being informed uh, about uh, this new technology in form of uh, uh, some publications, in form of um, workshops, or videos uh, online, social media? Well, I'd like to read more about it. That's how I get most of my information from reading the newspapers. Put it out, put the information out. That's what I would say in conclusion. Thank you, Mr. Brown. You're welcome. Autonomous vehicles are presenting um, challenges that obviously everybody is trying to think through, figure out. Um, for me, obviously, um, it seems desirable to have something that is almost totally automated and will allow me just to get into a vehicle and have the vehicle drive wherever I need it to go. But I do have some questions about that. Um, one thing, very, in, in a very broad sense, is the need to think through how these vehicles um, will be helpful and um, good for various people with disabilities. Obviously, what I just said is one thing that people will think about right away. Don't have to drive. But there's another part to this that I think interfaces with um, issues that able-bodied drivers will have. And that is, actually I like to drive. And um, I felt um, quite an accomplishment when I learned um, to drive and became a pretty good driver. Um, I like to have my um, attention and my uh, abilities engaged um, in doing things. Um, that's important for me especially because it's a big issue when you are dependent upon um, so many uh, kinds of help. Some of that help is uh, human assistance. For example, I have uh, personal care assistants helping me in the morning and the evening. Um, I have office assistants um, in, in my professional life. But it's very important for me to do as much as I can uh, in whatever uh, area I'm engaged in. And this applies to driving.